finished the other day the silicon wafers to get from company but how are they manufactured and their properties. Today we start with uh, the next uh, uh, something about where we actually fabricate the chips and these are called IC fab labs and uh, there are a lot of constraints one gets in fabrication of ICs. A few of the things which are listed here. Uh, semiconductor manufacturing yes, is constrained by a requirement of very, very, very clean rooms. Okay. Uh, the environment has to be very, very clean and I will give you some examples if they are not what can happen. Uh, they need not be just clean, it, as I said it should be super clean and uh, such an environment you have to create to make an IC fab. Okay. And uh, the, today we will talk about the clean rooms and then whatever goes inside the clean room we will talk and then something about before we prepare our uh, next processes, wafers need to be cleaned and there is a standard procedure of cleaning. And finally, we will also talk, talk if time permitting about gate rings. The word gator as I say will come later, but let us wait for that. So I repeat, I am looking for very high, high class of clean area where as we shall see what are the properties of clean rooms. How do we manufacture certain things, some things we have to be away from the normal routine in the case of when you are in clean room. For example, typically in a clean room, no more than 2 to 3 people are allowed to be in at a given time. Uh, the reason of course is, we will see later, uh, something related to particle motion due to Brownian system. Uh, so let us talk further. If you are noted down, uh, this is not exactly given in the either any of the books. Yeah, so partly it is given as I discussed, but not everything. Uh, I have designed first clean room of India way back in 83 to 86 or 85. So I was aware in those days what is the requirement of a clean room, and even to get those items in India was very difficult. So anyway, somehow we made our first clean room in 85 and uh, of course I do not say it was first in India by me. Some sense the industry had, BL has some fab lab, so his semiconductor complex has started in Chandigarh. But there were industries, no university boasted any IC lab till that time and we were the first to actually create IC fab area. So something which I have learned over the years may be of interest. So what is problem in a normal room? Normal room has lot many contaminants and they may be classified as particles, sur surface contaminants and molecular contaminants. So there are three kinds of contaminants are seen in an area in any, vol any volume of space and uh, as I say if we want to fab a chip, then we need to somehow control all of them. Here are some list of contaminations given. Uh, particle contamination is a uh, major source are the people working in the IC lab. I just now said, okay. So if you want to be inside the lab and you also want to work, then that is that goes against the clean room requirement. Okay. So that is why many people do not want to work because then the clean room will be clean. Okay. But uh, that is not the purpose. So limited people should be inside. Uh, the second part of the people who, uh, part of the things which come from people are skin's perspirations. We perspire a lot many times, not everyone but many, almost everyone but larger or smaller. And it contains lot of sodium. So one of the major contaminant which human body gives is sodium. Second are here, here are the sea of particles, okay. So if you go even go to a normal good looking hotel these days people wear caps, simple reason, the largest amount of contaminants come from here. 
then there are whatever we list, uh, wear clothings, they have some small uh, limbs all along and they float when the air comes. Okay. So clothing limbs, these are the major source of uh, part, uh, contaminant from person. Even a wood, you cannot live without wood or uh, particle boards or maybe uh, polish boards or everything in making of a lab. But in that case, they are the source of contaminants or particles. Any machine which saws or sand, uh, do sand, sand blasting or drilling can cause particle flow and these are the other contaminants. So first thing we will have to look into making a clean room is how to actually reduce this particle contamination and uh, we will see that there are ways of doing it and that is what the word is clean room. Okay. So if uh, first thing is clear that I want to reduce somehow particles which are floating around and as I said other day typically this room is slightly air conditioned, slightly closed. So it may be a 1 billion class of room which essentially is trying to say it is 1 billion 0.5 micron particle floating per FCFT per, per cubic feet. We will come back to the numbers. So we are talking of a billion particle per cubic feet and uh, the class of room which I am looking for is class 1 or better M1 as it is called or even M2s. So we are looking for particle removals in a large numbers and we will see how do we do that. So first is particles. The second is surface contaminants, <coughs> fingertips, uh, we all have uh, where we use fingers by design or otherwise we get some oil or grease on our fingertips. Then from the body itself there will be oil or from here there will be uh, oil. These are actually stick to a surface of a wafer or around it gets into over it, it is floating in the air but gets attached to silicon. Polish, polish is something due regards to and facial powder as I say, uh, the fairer sex are not allowed to use any nail polish or any face powder or any facial during the work inside the cam inside the clean rooms because they are the contaminants which sits on the silicon surface. Okay. Uh, the third of course is molecular contaminants. Uh, there are a lot many gassing, gases coming out inside the system, near the system. For example, there is a, uh, some kind of a evaporation system for electron beam or sputtering system. Uh, they have pumps which are firstly the first pump is diffusion pump and below that is rotary pump all uses some kind of uh, oil and they heat and the oil vapors are available even inside a clean room. Okay. We try to reduce or balkanize certain areas so that those vapors do not come to other areas but there is a vapor flow all along due to the system itself. Then there are wall paintings, uh, paints on the walls, uh, glues and epoxies, aromatics, alcohols, all these things are molecular contaminants. They are available in large amount in many places and uh, one has to take care that these are minimized during the uh, creation of a clean room as well as during the fab of the chip. So I repeat, first is particle contaminant. The second is surface contaminant, third are molecular contaminant. Uh, the same number, same name I am now, uh, little different name I gave you because though they are part of any other, but there are two kinds of uh, contaminants we see mostly in equipments and reagents. These are either inorganic or organic. Now there are heavy metals, we use stainless steel everywhere though it is best possible material which does not give enough particle contamination but it does give you some contamination which is oxides. Then there are pipes we use, the furnace front ends are there, other metallic impurities present in reagents, reagents 
all create some metals inside your solutions or inside your wave, uh, furnaces and these are uh, sometimes as we shall see may be killing actually your device performance. The from water, human perspiration, air as I just now said, the inorganic materials like alkali ions which can occupy silicon surface and most likely alkali ions which are seen on inside a clean room even if it is clean is sodium and potassium, mostly sodium, partly potassium. So one question is arising that is that really affecting you so much? that you are worried about making a clean room which may cost a billion dollars, okay, total area of say large fab, not a small lab, our maybe around 50 crore, 200 crores, our fab, new fab lab which is nano lab now it is called. Now the question arises, why are we so worried about contaminants? So here are two uh, foils, uh, of course I do not know whether it is, yeah, I do not know because it is taken from a book or other paper, so it is not very good but maybe I will explain you. Uh, there is something called a mask which we have not yet discussed, uh, either a glass plate or some other form on which pattern is created, it is like a photo plate okay, on which patterns are some is white region, some are black regions. So what happens here is a mask plate which has this region black. So if I have a film over which thin photoresist is coated, I said you last time some photoresist when receive light actually either become hard or soft depending on PPR or NPR kind they are. However, if there is a black portion, the light will not pass through. So the expectation is that if there is a particle next door or next to that black portion, particle is also opaque in most cases, so light will also not pass through that. So the pattern which is getting printed on a resist now because hard and soft areas will be additional this spot will come there, either it will be etched out or retained whichever way resist is used. Similarly, there is a possibility that the particle may sit on the dark area and that portion may actually be opaque, there are particles, quartz particles for example. They are, okay, uh, they are translucent, some light may pass through it. So the below there may be some portion cut out, some portion additional portion may be blocked or cut out and this means whatever pattern I was transferring does not get transferred when I go from uh, mass to a uh, mass plate when I expose it and resist everything what is on the mass does not really go because of contaminant. It can also have a problem that the contaminant may sit on the resist itself and even then it can create the same problems, okay. So contaminant particle size, now question is how small this particle size will be in say 14 nanometer node or maybe 11 nanometer or maybe 0 nanometer later. The particle size is at least around 0.5 micron or low, maybe 0 0.05 smallest particle known and if your dimensions are of the same size. So it may happen, maybe here itself. I have two metal areas which I was having, but and this gap is also of same order, and a particle. It's like this during resist. Now when I metallize, the two metal plates get shorted simply because metal also goes along with that. So you thought that two lines are separated by you, but in fact they are shorted, okay. This comes more at edges as we shall see in real life, okay. So there is a problem with the actual reliability issue. If number of particles are floating too high, there is more chances of shorting or opening of the areas without you knowing unless you see finally wafer is not, chips are not working, okay. So these this is one major worry which we say particle contaminations. Uh, for example, uh, the way impurities are incorporated in the silicon these days is by a process called ion implantation, high energy ion beams are uh, bombarded on the wafer. 
the resist normally acts like a good mask so no resist implant can go through this. However, this was the window where I was trying to implant certain impurities. Let us say this was p-type semiconductor and I was doing a phosphorus implant or arsenic implant. However, if there is a particle sitting in that so called window, okay, implant cannot then go through this, it may actually scatter from there okay, and may even give something called strontium as radioactive material sometimes if the metals are of that kind, molybdenum for example. Now what happens that this particle has actually, you have a total N region to be created and you found certainly two N regions and block open between the two, which you thought that oh I did everything correct but there is nothing working. The mass transistor channel is broken down let us say somewhere, there is an N type, you had uh, this implanted, N type in between there is a P, so there is some kind of depletion channel um, uh, things have appeared before even you started doing inversions. Okay. So there are issues which are very crucial in actual device performance. So these are particle contaminants which lead to failure of circuits or failure of device. There is another worry particularly for people in the as I earlier said the technologies are normally specified three ways these days one is processor market or processor technology then the other is uh, DRAM or memory technology and third of course is a flash okay. So most of the research is in these three areas flash memories of DRAM, SRAM, CAMs and uh, the rest of course is in logic which is normal uh, what we discuss. So if you look at the DRAM performance I hope some of you know uh, or your next course in design should talk about. A typical DRAM has one excess transistor and a capacitor which stores the charge which stores 1 or 0. If there is a charge on this capacitor we say 1, if there is no charge we say 0. Okay. So this is the red line, X line and this is my bit line. So if I am accessing it then this turn on because I turn on this word line so this capacitor shares charge with bit line capacitance and depending on this voltage on the bit line I can sense it was 1 or 0 okay. Now the problem is when I am not accessing okay. Even if I am not accessing I find there are two ways charge is lost and that is why DRAMs required refresh cycle every now and then whether you read it or you do not read it whether you access it or do not access it the charge is lost from the capacitor and because of that your 1 may not become 1, one may not remain 1 if for long that bit is never excised, exercised. Okay. Now this is a very serious problem and that is why there is a refresh has to go through which means during the refresh cycle you are not writing or reading anything. Okay. That means there is a slow down of the total cycle of DRAM because every certain number of this you have to come back and refresh all of it again. If it is a 256G memory, you can think how much large time it will take to refresh all of bits. Okay. Of course, there are faster way of rewrite writing, but all said and done, you need refresh on that. And refresh cannot be selected, refresh has to be through, through and through. Okay. So there is a time required. Typically, it may require around a 1 millisecond, uh, every millisecond you should have to come and refresh. Okay where your excess time may be in tens of nanoseconds or 30 nanoseconds. Now why this happens? As I say there is a leakage in the capacitor and there is a leakage in this so called transistor okay. because of the junction sitting in a MOS transistor they actually leak whether you like or you do not know there is a reverse bias current. Also the threshold which you thought is very correct threshold is not very correct. There is a sub threshold current also flows in the device. So there is a leakage due to junction, there is subthreshold currents, there is a leakage in the capacitor and all in all finally charge is lost okay. and therefore you say you need re-refresh -re every. Now replenish this charge you require to generate for example in a capacitance, large amount of carriers should be generated back so that it comes back to the level you want 
okay. So, there is a time associated with refresh cycle or even excess cycle also is called re, re, uh, generation time which is in equilibrium normally the recombination time. In the case of transistors it is a recombination which generates this junction currents. Okay. So, this is called Shockley Reed Hall mechanisms which leads to junction leakages. Now, these are major worries. So, you are worried about the recombination time and equivalently the generation time. Larger the generation time that means charge is retained this much more because you have much more time to adjust the charge and therefore you will have much smaller other times or this. Now from where this SRH mechanisms or leakage mechanism occurs is essentially because of what we call as traps. Okay. A SRH mechanism that is a Shockley Reed Hall mechanism is dominated due to presence of traps in silicon. Traps essentially gives a energy level in the band gap of any material particularly in silicon it may be close to half Eg by 2 or Eg by 2. Closer to the Ei larger is the trap current. Okay. Both whole electrons can have probability to reach Et faster and therefore recombine. So, if you look at the combination times. Uh, it is essentially given by sigma Vth nt inverse of that where nt is the number of uh, i is the num trap density or number per centimeter square and uh, by semiconductor industry standards tau r tau g should be greater than 25 microsecond and if I know capture cross section of the most materials uh, most systems which I what is capture cross section the area which a carrier actually sees before getting trapped is called capture cross section some other day in physics course or Professor Vasi will be more happy and much more serious about telling the trap problems. So, the capture cross section is typically 10 to the power minus 15 and uh, if I calculate back the minimum required tau g or tau r then any trap should be around 10 to the power 12 per centimeter square okay, per cc. Now, typical silicon doping is 10 to the power 14 above and traps are around 10 to the power 12 which is around 0 0.02 part per billion. Now, traps are because of what? There are many materials like iron, copper, gold they are present there and there are other two sodium and coelom they are essentially not so much at in the band gap in the mid gap they are closer to the surface either mostly towards conduction band and these are ions. So, these are the possible impurities and as I say when I showed you the list of contaminants I did show you all of them are contaminants for us and if they are present there nt may increase and if nt increases the tau g or tau r also goes down. That means your refresh has to be not milliseconds but maybe 100 microsecond and in worst case maybe every microsecond before you access you read first write. Then why do you if you have to every time write and then read then as well directly you can read the data okay. And why mem memory? Memory is kept because you do not want to write every now and then store something. So, the very purpose of memory will be lost if you require refresh cycle every microsecond or every nanosecond, tens of nanosecond. Access time is 30 nanosecond and you rewrite also every 30 nanosecond, then why write? Okay, read directly from wherever you are transferring data. So, the game is that this refresh cycle has to have larger time, therefore, traps should be very, very small numbers, less than 10 to the power 12 possible, which means the processing has to see that these are not present in the silicon area anywhere around so that they just get in touch and sit there okay. in any reason. Okay. These may come even from the solutions or gases which we we'll use so we, they also should be pure enough that they do not introduce these mini impurities. Okay. So, these are very crucial problems which memory people are worried about and uh, particularly with 4G and above or 256G DRAMs this is becoming a very serious issue. Of course, there are 
very interesting new technologies that have come in DRAMs. We do not right now want to use single transistor DRAMs. We are going back to three transistor DRAMs for variety of reasons, some other code, some other day. Okay. Uh, this third part as I say sodium potassium which I did not want to club there but I wrote are alkali ions and they particularly are part of silicon dioxide growths. Now if you see the gate oxide of a MOS transistor which is the major uh, material which makes MOS transistor go, it is essentially we say the if gate oxide threshold if you write for either N or P type it is 5ms work function difference, Fermi potential twice the Fermi potential Q N A and N A and I by N A by N I or N D by N I, K T by Q L N, N A by N I or N D by N I plus or minus will sign come accordingly. Then there is a bulk charges because of the doping in the silicon substrate concentration Q B, Q A, A, N A, X D, X D is the repletion layer. So this is related to dopings. These are charges which are available, fixed charges which are always available. There is another term which one can add and maybe Professor Vasi is the, he will be so very happy to see this number. Interface states, they also contribute variable charge. Okay. Why I keep saying Professor Vasi because for 40 years uh, he is with MOS surfaces. Recently, two years ago, he changed to photovoltaics. Okay. But otherwise, his research interest and his personal interest probably matched here. He has been working on MOS surface systems for 35, 40 years. So I think he may be the number one person all over the world maybe, I do not know, many are shifted up. I left it in 90s but I think he continued. Okay. So QM is the mobile charge. What is mobile? Sodium and potassium when in, into the oxide area or volume, they actually are not fully bonded to SiO2 lattice. Since they are not bonded or even if they are what is called e e electrovalent linkage, the bond is very weak and sodium is released very fast. Little temperature and sodium will come out. Okay. Since sodium even at room temperature or at least 30, 40 or 50 degree centigrade is extremely mobile, it has large mobility. So depending on in a mass structure, this is your oxide, this is your silicon, this is your metal and let us say this is Na plus. Let us say I have a negative terminal here and positive to this minus VGS I am applying, let us say. So most of the sodium may come towards metal. But if I put plus here and minus here, which is plus VGS, in which case sodium will be close to the silicon surface. And when I calculate a threshold, whatever charges are available at the interface of oxide and silicon was taken care and that is the numbers these charges are actually very close to the surface. Since the metal then will be very and this alkali ions will be very close to the surface, there are charged species and because of that Vt will actually be affected by Qm by C ox term. Okay, this is a calculation, some codes can do that. Since the temperature varies, VGS varies because you are turning on off device. So it is not that fixed temperature or fixed uh, voltages will appear. So these sodium will be actually moving in the oxide. If they move, the QM value at a given surface point is time dependent, which means threshold is time dependent, which essentially means I was doing some logic, suddenly I find the time of charging of that output load is reduced suddenly. No reason, I have done any nothing, I applied same bias. It did not work. Then I figured out, oh, it might have heated, so I must have really pushed in or pushed out. So this is called instability okay. and there are two words which we use in most cases, positive bias temperature instability and negative bias temperature instability, particularly for flash ROMs, this is becoming a major worry, NBTI specifically. And uh, because in, NB, in the case of ROMs, what is the way we do it? 
we have a bit line which is charged to a voltage, we have a E prom cell or E square prom cell and we are putting some gate voltage to actually drive and we assume that the threshold of this transistor is either enhanced or decreased and if it is enhanced then nothing, no access to the output, if it is smaller it, it has an access to the bit line. This is how 1 0 the rate there, okay. Now if the VT varies, one does not know whether bit line gets connected or does not get connected even if it wants or it does not want. So there is a issue in a flash ROM that particularly because flash voltages are coming down, this may actually dominate, okay. That sodium contamination may actually dominate. So we are extremely worried in case of flash to get this so called temperature instability reduced and that is why contaminants like sodium potassium and other kinds should be minimized. Why I always give this actually I think even Plummer talks about it, he is also an electrical person. So we all believe that we have reasons to think why we are doing something because electrically it will affect us at the end. If it does not affect who cares even if it is dusty area, who cares if my chips are working well without any problem I will not dare to do anything on that. But I figure that nothing works, then I will have to solve problem, that is what we do, okay. Okay, so this is, you must have understood that why we are so much worried, okay. There is a clean room concept, site infrastructure, facilities and building are, has to be taken care designing a clean room. You also need to think about power supplies and their distribution. Uh, some are uh, uh, standard power supplies can be uh, 230 lines you need, 60 volt line you need, many equipment need 60 volt. So stabilized or non-stabilized, both kinds of sources are required. Okay. Distribution is very important, a priori we have to decide where power is will be required, so where which equipment will be there how much power will be required, that kind of lines have to be put. So power supply design is a major design in case of a clean room, okay. Because once clean room is created, nothing can be changed, okay. It is very expensive to change anything. Then there is also a system which needs uh, communication from outside. Of course, one is telephones probably, but even telephones box itself is a contaminant. So we will like to avoid it as much. But we also want a system in which I can talk. So there is a membrane kind of see through port which is sealed from both sides, but membrane vibrates. So I talk and insert person can listen it. Okay. So these are membrane blocks which essentially can allow you actual talking without any connections. Okay. But of course, telephones are still used, blocked very way so whether it is. Then we have to worry about there will be large area where you think you are going to IC fab but there will be some area which will be ultra clean which is called main clean room area. Also we have to worry about side areas which is feeding this main clean. For example this uh, gallery outside how much it will affect us is very strong dependent because if that is too particle content then the diffusion may actually come in this side. Then, uh, we need lot of central facilities, gas supplies, line, many other hundreds of things you have to supply in, okay. Then we need process utilities, you may have furnaces, ALD machines, so many machines, lithography room, so many facilities inside a clean room. That is the purpose of making a chip. If they are not there, how do we make a chip? So we need to them. So we must take care how much thermal load they will create, okay, how much area contaminant they are going to give and which area they should be kept so that their uh, dirty things do not go too far. Okay. And of course one is always worried about environments because if I release gases in, in the air I may survive inside but someone outside this area building or outside this IIT may also get affected, may die as in one case, some cases. Arsene for example if it is released. 30 percent of the people in first 50 meters will die, okay, before they know that what is happening. Okay. So that is very important in making designs. This is just to give idea because this is what I took care when 
if 30 years ago we of course over the years change things have changed but not much. We also have to decide how much area each will have, lithography should be around 25 percent, diffusion LPC VD should be 20 percent, implantation may be 10 percent, thin film that is uh, e-beam depositions, etching and uh, sputtering they should uh, occupy 20 percent, dry etching area may be 15 percent, wet cleaning areas may be 10 percent. So we actually distribute areas also where which areas what we are going to keep and we are going to see that these too much area because each has contaminant giving problems. So you must mark your areas where you will keep where and how much is the area you will allocate. Okay. As I said these numbers are mine and may vary from Intel lab to TI lab to other labs to even our own lab. Okay. But this is typical numbers which one are, see since I designed it I thought I will inform you that it, person has to take care even if you are electrical person when you are making your lab for which you are going to work there do not believe that chemical engineers will do as good a job unless you are around. So someone has to keep telling him this is what I want, this is what I want. Okay, okay so this is typical area as I said these have no meaning but it is just to say you that we divide certain areas for certain work. Sir, how do you decide the percentage? How, like yeah, yeah. Uh, firstly, the sizes of the equipments. Other than that, there is no other. No, other is like for example, diffusion furnaces actually release too much of gases. Okay, though we have exhaust them, but there is a thermal currents which keep flowing there. So, if that area is too small, then there is a possibility that it will go faster otherwise. So, I want to remove heat right there. So, I'll keep little larger area so the power density, thermal density reduces. So each has some reason, I mean as I said these are not specifically accurate but typically given by the sizes and the out, out gassing or out products they give one has to decide areas. Okay. Many times these are to be thrown out because this is the lab given by the institute, this is the area. Now you put your brains how best you can achieve in this what. Okay. But if given a space I will like to divide it properly. Okay, before I Good. Uh, I mean, finish this. Uh, there is a site given to them. This is a center of na excellence in nano whatever we have. Fifty percent of that center is in IIC Bangalore. We shared the money. We shared the work as well. So this is taken from there. I think Dr. Professor Anil and Professor Vijay Raghavan have actually created a video. I have not seen it, but hopefully it is there. Or I give you this is HTTP www.nano.isc.rnet.in slash semiconductor clean rooms intro PDF. This is by Vijay Raghavan, PM Vijay Raghavan. www.nano.isc.rnet.in slash semiconductor clean rooms intro P dot PDF. The PDF has this problem, you cannot copy it, so I could not, other way I would have copied partly from this site itself, but this is just some word printout and it is not coming good in colors. Okay. But you can still see some way, this is a corridor, both sides you have rooms which are glass panelled everywhere. Okay. These are the furnaces, other systems kept there, this is the clean area for lithography. So we do have areas which are unmarked for each activity, is that clear? Yes. So this site as I say please see it, hopefully they have better, maybe today I may also see it. But but I asked Anil, so he, he thinks that, he, he told me he has put it. Of course this is not his slide, this is from some other paper. Uh, you can see from here the central area is the most clean area, okay. class 1 as the word written there, class 1. Uh, so the, there are central area which is the cleanest area and you can see outside that central area is called equipment area and which is class 1000. Now this class word will define soon. Okay. Then there are process tools, pumps, this everything. The ma major thing which you should look into is these three top areas. 
this, this, this. Now, these are essentially you can see filter script there, even here there are filters, okay. Of course, there are side filters, but on the top there are filters. So, when the air comes, they are filtered down and goes down actually. These filters essentially decide the class of clean room you actually make, okay. So, you need air filters, what particles you can allow from the air to get in. After all, you cannot live without air, so you have to survive. So, you say do block all air, then contaminant will be 0, so you will not be there. So, if you have to be there, you need air, okay. So, survival also needs, uh, you need survival, so we do that, okay. Uh, for example, this you can see the process tools and one person is standing on this. So, the front of the furnace or which are this is only visible inside the main clean area where wafer will be actually opened. The back portion it goes into class 1000 area because that area may is not very much used for silicon opening, okay. So, that is how we say. So, gradient at least should be 1000 to 1, 1000 just outside where furnaces are sitting. The front end of the furnace actually goes inside the clean room, the rest is closed from around. So, only furnace end is seen. Now, this HEPA filters as we shall see soon. So, what are the contaminant control we need? We need to have look for filters. We need to have air conditioning because we need temperature and humidity control. Typically in a clean room 22 degree centigrade is the temperature maintained, 40 percent relative humidity is and some areas may have 45 percent, some may 40. Lithium office should have as low possibly 40 or even lower if possible. Please remember temperature and humidity goes against each other, larger the temperature humidity is much less relative humidity. So, if you increase the temperature to 30 degree obviously humidity may go 10 percent, but then you cannot the particles will start floating because Brownian motion will be very high. So, you have to cool and you cannot cool too low because again you will feel chill and you may not be able to work. So, 20 to 22 is the range up to which we normally survive and uh, that is the temperature at which most of the clean rooms are maintained. Uh, there is air pressure inside, forward pressure is maintained which is 30 Pascal. I think some other day I will give you there are number of units for vacuum as well as pressure as I say, foot per square inch is 1, but there are other star bars, Pascals, many others, 5 of them, but we will give some relationship and we will talk about pre system where partial pressure. So, this is up to quarter quarter or something. So, if your air pressure should be larger than 30 Pascals or 0.25 tar, 760 tar is atmosphere, ok. So, acoustic noise is another area, it should be less than 60 dB. This is what Supreme Court also says, less than 60 dB. So, the same number should be inside clean room. So, no speeches no loudspeakers, okay. Of course, you can play what apps or not, I do not know, but uh, I, that was not there in my time. So, I do not know how much vibration and noise pollution it gives, okay. Uh, typical vibration system should be very stable. As I say, we are looking for platforms where your wafer is going to sit and if it vibrates with some numbers, then it can never align with anything, okay. So, Either the relative vibration should be same 0 or you should have vibrations as small as possible 3 microns per second is all that we are looking for, okay. Uh, there is electrostatic discharge, there is a uh, because of the nature whenever we touch we provide some voltage, electrostatic voltage. Typically it can be human body can be 1500 volts, okay. Whereas we are expecting ESDs less than 50 volt. We also do not want any magnetic fields, it should be less than 1 milligauss because many of the materials are affected by magnetic fields. We need do not want to have any hydrocarbons less than 100 ppb, preferably 10 ppb. And many other contaminants whatever it is should be less than half ppb. So, this is kind of clean room requirements when you get in and uh, this is the kind of main area, these are the filter areas through which air is coming down. Air is coming from air conditioner, okay. 
and uh, there are mini filters, micro filters and HEPA filters. So air, now this is an issue which is important because if I have three levels of filtering before the air is pushed in, uh, the pressure which I am building from the system side, from the fresh air side has to be such that the air has either sufficient flow or not very large amount of flow. If you have a large amount of flow, then the particles will also come with that, okay, move, they move with that. If you have too little, uh, this is coming it, it also it creates a problem that air is, some globules of air is formed, so that is not allowed, it is called sucking systems, so in between. The major thing which we look into is essentially called, if the air is coming from here, it should flow exactly vertically down without any of the layers of air actually interacting with it there. This is called laminar flow. So there is some, uh, if you are aeronautics person, this is the standard renal number which decides the some kind of flow system. It should be small enough so that they are not distributing themselves, they do not interact, so the air particles do not flow out, they remain vertically down and also if this is my age, the air comes and comes out and it does not go towards silicon side. Okay. So these are some requirements. We also look at it that the uh, class 1000 as we soon this has a lower cost, there are no walls, generally boards are put, better than class and environment and process tools are inside and there should be then the problem starts. Your other equipment is outside this clean area, but you will have to carry your wafers inside the clean area. So either there should be, you should carry, but then you are the dirtiest person around. So you are carrying with all your dirt around. So you must pass inside. So there are called pass boxes, which are air sealed as class 1 air sealing as they call. You release a pressure, the box internally opens, you put the box in, close it, then I will open it, take the box out. Okay. So this is all transfer boxes areas are also possible. Okay. The HEPA stand for high efficiency particulate air filter, they are typically of the sizes of 0 0.01 micron, 0 0.05 and even 0 0.5. Particle sizes are not uh, 0 0.5 even in 5 microns, okay. they can be large particles. When I say it is a 0 0.05 HEPA, I am actually talking uh, this nines you should now learn in the semiconductor technology or any technology, we always talk about nines, eight nines. Eight nines means 99.6 nines, 99.999999 is called eight nines. Okay. So you need eight nine percent of 0 0.08 micron be removed when I say it is 0 0.05 HEPA, okay. these many of this kind should get out. Okay. Then there is another HEPA which is 0 0.01 which is 69 percentage of 0 0.04 particle removed. Okay. So that is the HEPA part. Uh, many clean room nowadays on the wall HEPAs because of much more air you want and much more laminar system you want to create certain, you want a horizontal laminar, you may have filter. When the air comes from down, up, upward and goes down, you must understand there must be something, a return air path from where air will go. So there must be some kind of system where air is push, uh, pulled in and taken out. Okay. These are called return air paths. So air is coming down and you actually suck it from the bottom and that is passed through return. Every uh, AC cycle should have 30 percent fresh air. Okay. Every fresh this 30 percent fresh air is pushed in, 30 percent is because otherwise heat becomes higher and higher, the con con condenser may not work, okay. compressor may not work. Okay. So these are called return paths which is very important, a typical cross section, I mean this plan area one can see from here, these are racks, green racks, these are the actual benches on which systems are kept. Then there are shelf of glues, uh, shelf of this. Before you enter inside, uh, you must wear what is called as bungee, 
this is made of terrain bungee suit which is completely covering yourself and uh, as I say humans are the worst so first thing you cover yourself tie it up yourself use goggles sometimes in many companies you need triple goggles as they call all hair should be completely invisible so you do not know who is inside actually when you see the person only by height roughly you know but otherwise you do not know who is he or she okay. so there is an entrance where you go through a shower a small area you first enter there one gate is closed one gate is open you enter here the other gate goes and there is a huge HEPA filter all around you and a large amount of air is pushed on you so all the part and then there is a the grill below so if the grill below all the particles sit below the grills and you actually get completely dry washed okay so that is how you enter the lab okay same the same area which I shown you as a larger this okay this is something more important the the lower part of the labs are normally has small holes or grills as they called and the air actually is pushed down you actually walk around 6 inches grills so you walk tack 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 on that okay uh, there is as I say these are only these are under areas around these are called service areas where cylinders every other things are kept back side that itself should be at least class 10,000 okay so this is a mini environment for a flap floor okay these are the tools which you are working at there are also emergency exits uh, many times there will be six in larger areas at least two in a normal if you see in our lab there is only one uh, this is the class of rooms which I discussed uh, for all long typically this class is specified by a number of ways one is 209 East federal standards which is American standard and there is a British standard and there is a non-British non-American standard which is what most people agree this is called class of room typically this number which we are talking class 1000 10,000 is the number of 0.5 micron particles per cubic feet this is should be understood per cubic feet VLSI technology is the only area where we work on both FPS and MKS system together or CGS system together we specify something in micron and the area sometimes in mils, milli inches okay so class wise so CFT is volume by feet 1 feet 1 feet 1 feet and how many particles so class 10,000 0.5 micron particle has class 10,000 such particles class 1 has 0.5 particles is around 1 particle and there is a class M1 which is lower than that and can go even lower than 0.1 microns this is actually M10 is the latest one now which essentially is even better is used for below 16 nanometer nodes actually so you can see uh, we are the people in right now as I say this may be class billion so you are talking of 0.5 micron particles a billion numbers per CFT floating here with air conditioners if you remove air conditioner it will become trillions okay. so also you must know when I move my hand from say 1 feet I move at least 10 lakhs or 1 million particles 1 feet I move hand 1 million particles I move so your motion in the lab also has to be restricted or the number of particles itself should be small enough so they do not move okay. all, all tricks of the trade so typically as I say we are looking for class or subclass 1 uh, uh, clean rooms the reason why we are looking for this less than 0 0.05 now because this is the feet, these are the feature sizes we are working on and anything particle which is of same size and if same numbers then the nothing will come out so features has to be uh, taken into considerations however all said and done as I keep saying nature sometimes works for you some unknown which you do not know actually helps you out so something happens good so company survives unknowingly okay uh, this is federal standard 209, 209. in a electronic there are too many standards for example 
uh, military as standard 801, 803, 8, 833, so many specifications they will give you. Okay. Space has its own standards, okay. clean rooms have its own standard, Americans have different standard, Germans have different standard. Communication, actually communication only probably works on standards, nothing else, I do not know anything they do more than standards. Oh, there should be another standard. So, another 20 people will meet and create third standard. So, every now and then we are finding standards, okay. Good travel and good nice time, you see. So, typically what we are saying M1 is has a 10 particles of 0.1 micron and uh, higher of course will be smaller, okay. Class 1 has 35 particles. So, I need M1 which should be less than 1.1 micron particle. So, I should actually work on higher than M1 in many cases. So, that of course, 0 0.05 according to this will be even higher than 10 and we are expecting better than 1 inside that region. So, M1 also has been now there are M1 to M9 standards have appeared. Intel is using M10, I do not know why that 0 appeared but that is their lab number, clean number. So, I do not mean when I am clear the other particles are, there will be all size of particles. Even if I have a HIPAA, I myself may release, machines may release. So, there are all sizes, but the number should be correspondingly smaller if you go for a smaller or higher class, uh, smaller class of clean rooms. And I already said what particles can actually trouble you in your circuit performance. I am least interested if these particles come or go. If it does not hurt my silicon, thank you very much. But it does, then I am worried. So, please remember all our theories or what we talk about has some at the end relationship with the performance of the chip and that is where we are actually bound to work for. So, all the courses in EE department in microelectronics probably were designed earlier to say how ICs are done. Things are improved too many these ways, so I do not know it is the only thing. Spin transistor for example, whether it will come or not, but it is very interesting. And it is, it is, its functionality is very, very good. It seems as if it will do everything what you want, but whether it will do it at the end of the day and will go into chip is only God knows and I will certainly not because till 2050 it will not come. As I say, I am not going to be there, maybe another few years also, but at least then. Last part of this is, as I say, many of the wafers, when they come, even if they are virgin wafers, virgin wafers means coming from the company itself in a box which are very highly tight and uh, uh, actually there is a silica gel cap there so that no moisture is retained. Everything comes good as they claim, they are mirror polished better than normal mirrors because the there you have a mercury oxide and other materials to shine. Here it is only silicon polish. Okay. Uh, however, uh, there are whenever you open a wafer in any clean area, there are called clean benches. There is a inside the clean room there is a benches on the top which is HEPA filters are there. Air is passed through this and the area below is laminar system. So, you open a wafer, it is better than the actual clean room area, okay. And therefore, much less particle contamination is expected on silicon, okay. So, better than class 1 as I said. However, silicon is extremely uh, fond of oxygen, okay. And therefore, as soon as you open it, it will oxidize, okay. And that can be seen by its polish, okay, suddenly your face may not be as bright. Okay. okay, there are also organics which are sitting, whatever you touch it, whichever way some grease, carbon, oils do comes on that. Okay. So, even if we are getting fresh wafers, but that is only first time, but once you are you started using, you are passing these wafers to number of chemicals, number of gases, so they are getting this every next step anyway. So, some way for the before the next process step starts, we must do something that the wafer is clean as earlier. Okay. So, there is a cleaning procedure which was decided that we should have. Okay. 
uh, of course we also need pre-clean and post-clean uh, things like for every process step diffusion, oxidation, CVD, metal, cylinder, name any uh, CMOS process, spacer creation, contact, vias in CMOS, for every process step you do you need pre-cleaning to do this process and post-cleaning after the process has been completed. So this pre and post is a part of the game, all processes which you work to make a chip pre-clean followed by process followed by post-clean is standard practice. So silicon cleaning is an essential part uh, in any fabrication step and it follows every step in fact, so it is very important. These process steps anyway this is the course, we will do all these processes now. The first process after our clean room system is diffusion or incorporation of impurities. That is how device is made, P and N unless we are together no junction. So first thing how to imp uh, incorporate impurities is the next part of this course. Okay. As I say these are standards, uh, they need not have been written exactly in the same format as I wrote in the plumber's book, but uh, I think everything must be available. This course I, I do write myself, so I many times do not know from where it is or how it is, but must be from some book, some journal, some idea of mine, whichever I actually did, 30 years I was in process line, so I know what problems I faced. Okay. So as I say every process step should be followed by cleaning. Now most important thing is a integrated circuit cannot be fabricated without a etching step. After all you are selectively doing certain things that means certain area you want to remove. Okay. So etching is most important step other than lithography as we shall discuss and uh, they actually form the major base for any IC uh, fab. Okay. Now there are two kinds of etchings we use, one are called solution based in which you actually dip the wafer into a solution okay. and uh, other is dry etching in which only gases are used to etch the things, solutions, liquids and dry. In the dry etching also nowadays there is another etching which has started coming and that is called photon based, okay. you bombard with photons, okay. something new has appeared. But anything you bombard, photon is a way, practically no mass, so one expect no damage, but it is seen there is a damage. Okay. So we need to remove nitrides, remove metals, we want to remove even silicon to create trenches. Oxide is the major thing we keep etching every now and then. Okay. We also need silicon etching because to create vias down. Okay. So the procedure which most people believe is correct, slightly modified by different companies. There is a Siemens process, there is a IMAC process, there is a RCA cleaning cycle which is most accepted by many companies with modifications which they never tell. Okay. Like Intel follows only 80 percent of RCA clean, so what is that 20 percent? No one knows. Okay. Piranha cleaning, they have another process in which three steps are different from RCA. Why do they do it? But their wafer processing is good actually. So each company has its own cleaning cycles. And uh, this is what a very standard cleaning which is most people believe it is good and also work partly at least 80 percent to 90 percent is here. If you are written down I may start looking for RCA that is the major cleaning system which almost everyone uses. Uh, there is a small difference in some place steps which way back in 83 I have introduced which now they claim I make has is doing it possibly. Uh, there are number of steps when you take the silicon first you boil the silicon or other heat maybe 120 to 150 you can also call it boil in H2SO4 H2O2 solution typically some people use 1 is to 1 some use 1 is to 4 okay 
that is the difference every, every person has his own standard procedure in mind and he keeps doing it. Okay. 1 is to 1 is mine, maybe others I do not know, but it goes up to 1 is to 4 if you look the books or journals. Typically 10 minutes boil is sufficient. Uh, please remember do not put water around when you are boiling H2O4, H2O4 actually splits and may hurt your face. So, do not add water any time in boiling H2O4. Okay. Why I know? Because once I did, my whole hand got burnt. So, I tell you now. What is the purpose? To remove organic materials, grease, and resist. Please remember H2O2 actually in the solution system immediately reduces to H2O plus nascent oxygen, and nascent oxygen is extremely reactive. So, what happens any uh, material which by removal of uh, their oxides are soluble, this nascent oxygen will oxidize them into solvents, uh, soluble this into the liquid. So, they will be removed from the surface. Okay. Same way carbons, all carbon containing compounds get oxidized faster and are solubles or at least separatable from the silicon. The major reason why we also add H2O, H2O of course can remove many materials because of sulphates which are solubles, but we actually add H2O2 for one more reason because it creates silicon dioxide H2O2. So, this oxygen reacts silicon faster and then makes SiO2 and this thin SiO2 layer actually contains impurities because that surface area is same. So, some of the impurities are well within this thin oxide. So, if I next time remove this oxide, even those impurities will be taken care, those will not form sulphates, not form oxides, can still be retained in this top silicon dioxide layer which I naturally creating okay, and they can be then removed out. The every process step of any kind must followed by DI water rinse, we have discussed what is DI water and after DI water rinse, we the third step uh, is we etch the wafer HF plus H2, HF is agent for SiO2, fluorine is a very strong oxidizing I mean reducing agent for SiO2. So, it removes sil as a silicon fluoride, silicon fluoride is soluble material. Okay. So, SiO2 plus 4 HF is SiO4 plus H2O is the reaction. Okay. Typically, this is called dilute HF, 1 is to 10, 1 HF plus it is in some people do even as low as 100 H2O, H2O2 which means it dilutes the HF even lower. The reason why they dilute because thickness of silicon dioxide is very low during the last process. So, this is sufficient for removing this much. But there are other people believe that HF also tends to actually create, I mean why larger because that may give some pits. So, there are people who have different times and temperatures. Typically 1 to 2 minute at room temperature is sufficient. Again every process step must follow DI water rinse. So, 3 to 5 minute you rinse to remove all HF traces. Okay. Then this is the most two steps which are coming now are the most important step. This is how RCA is most famous for to remove organic metals and like hydroxides or oxides, we put the wafers in NH4OH, H2O to H2O bath, typical ratios can be 1 is to 1 is to 5, 1 NH4OH, 1 H2O to 5 water or in some cases 0 0.05 NH4OH, 1 H2O to 5 H2O, this is called SC1 cleaner, okay. company names this as SC1. Okay. You boil the wafers for 10 minutes around 80 to 90 degree centigrade bath or by flames which are or this heating plate. Nowadays we have rarely used plates because plate themselves are particle cream this. So, we actually use baths. Okay. Okay. Uh, they remove as I say and uh, since there is a H2O2, it will again leave a trace of silicon dioxide when you remove the paper from this solution. Again rinse it for 5 to 10 minutes because this NH4OH ions has to be removed much more from them. So, we rinse it longer at room temperature. For example, ionic 
not only adds in this first step either H2SO4 and ozone or followed by H2O plus ozone. So, they have a ozone technology, ozone again is similar like H2O2 because a ozone breaks faster into O2 and O and it does the oxidation. So, instead of H2O2, uh, IMEC is the micro center at the Belgium, they where from Anil has did his PhD. So, he, he, it is from his recital, he is using ozone. Okay. Ozone has an advantage that you can actually push through gas phase, but then it bubbles and it actually does not allow proper rinsing of silicon. So, there are issues. If you would ask me, I would have said that is not the best way, but does not matter. After this, uh, we want to remove remainder of metal ions or alkali ions as chlorides. So, we have we boil this into HCl H2O2 plus plus H2 in a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 6. Again boil for 10 minutes and 80 to 90 degree centigrade. Chlorides are removed as alkali ions, uh, metal ions as chlorides and again whenever you put H2O2 you will leave a thin layer of silicon dioxide. Now many people believe and that is the difference between say our uh, RCA clean and many real RCA clean which started way back in 50, 70s. They do not have this step 9, they do not edge the last oxide. They believe this 20 angstrom oxide is a good passivator, it is punchable by most impurities. So, it is better to preserve it for the processing. We believe that 20 angstrom oxide may create interface states those interface states may actually reduce your mobility in a short channel device. So, our belief was slightly different. So, we normally used to edge and many companies now I find do edge this HF actually. So, you give 1 percent HF treatment that is 1 to 100 in water, boil it and again rinse it very heavily now for 20 minutes for removing all kinds of fluorine traces, all kinds of whatever in the material on the surface should go away normally in a running water, spray water as we say, so that most of the physically removed particles can be moved out. And many cases, uh, they can dry these wafers into N2O gas flow system or there is a another which Intel uses is isopropyl alcohol vapors IPA. Uh, see people do not think N2O N2 is very pure compared to IPA. This is there because it can be uh, multiple distilled IPA. So, Intel still uses IPA compared to nitrogen flow. Okay. The, please remember the process steps which I am talking are generic company to company. Siemens has slightly 30 percent different from this. Micron has even different. Global foundries have even another small variation in their last steps. So, each company has its own processing cycles and we keep doing before we leave just a minute. In IC processing most used reagent is water, water is the major uh, reagent we need. As I said other day we need roughly for a good foundry 54,000 gallons of water per day. Okay. So, it is a company has to provide get this much water from a state government okay. 54,000 gallons per day is used by a company. So, we decide the quality of water which is called ultra high pure water. Something nowadays most people are having you know aqua guard or water purity or whatever it is. It is essentially purifiers. Similar system is used. We have three quality markers for water. One is the resistivity, other is particulate size in the water and third is bacterial content. Now, typical tap water if you look at uh, Actually, there is a statement made by some good doctors these days, start actually drinking tap water. Okay. I am not, do not believe me, I am just telling you. They say it is much more uh, good, it is much better for human body, but produces uh, what is called as cells which will actually protect you. So, maybe, but essentially tap water has dissolved inorganic compounds of sodium, calcium, strontium also. Even some mercury traces are found in Mumbai, dissolved organic compounds like living matter, 
then there is a particular particulates like silica, sand particles, dust particles, paper pieces. Then there is a microbiological life like fungi, algae uh, is there. And there are of course bacteria, both can be viral or non-viral. Okay. Now the first thing and most mostly we do it is to figure out resistivity and typically water resistivity we use is something quickly to one more slide and we will finish. H2O please, H2O goes H plus OH in any equation in equilibrium. H and OH ion concentration is equal and it is typically of the order of 610 to power 13 per cc. Diffusivity of ion is essentially given, we have discussed this KT by Q mu, where actually the mu or mobility of ions is given by Z Q D by KT and this relation is not pure Einstein because there is a charge Z, ion charge Z is associated. So, it is called nurse einstein relation. So, we calculate for mobility for mu H plus and mu H by using this if I know the diffusivity. Diffusivity of OH and HO ion are known from chemical people. This is 9.3 to the power minus 5 centimeter per second. This is 5.3 to this. So, I get mobilities. If I know mobility then I know the concentration. What do I calculate? Resistivity. I know the mobility. I know the number. I know the charge, so I know the resistivity and resistivity of water is therefore a measure of quality. Let me just show you the numbers. H2O breaks into H plus OH, equilibrium both are same concentrations. Diffusivity is given by uh, ZQD by KT is mu is called nurse relation, nurse Einstein relation. So I calculate mobility for hydrogen ions, mobility for OH ions which is 3.59 and 2.04 centimeter square volt second. These numbers, so if you can somehow do better then we will see what, what can be done better, okay. Is it okay? So if I calculate resistivity which is Q mu n plus Q mu p, p like similar like H and OH, so I calculate mu. I know concentrations, I substitute them here and I find that the pure water has 18.5 mega ohm centimeter resistivity which is extremely high. 18, you need not put all this, you can write rho as this and directly write this. I just did maths. Okay. If I compare with dive, uh, tap water with deionized water, then the resistivity is tap water is 200 kilo ohm, 200 ohm centimeter. You can see how bad it is, so many ions. But as I say, they may be useful, some of them, okay. 200 ohm centimeter is a tap water and DI water is greater than 18 mega ohm centimeter. Number electronic electrolytes available inside tap water is 10 to power 5 part per billion and it should be less than 10 part per billion in case of DI water. Particulates 10 to power 5 numbers per cc in tap waters, less than 10 numbers per cc in DI water. Organics 10 to power 2 to 10 to power 5 numbers per cc in tap waters. Of course, these are not necessarily Bombay water, it can be worse or better in certain areas. Borivili may have worse, we may have the best. Do you know why? The first water release comes from the cleaning this in Bandup to IIT without actually getting further contaminated by the pipelines. So we get probably the best water in whole Mumbai, okay, luckily. Okay. So these are the numbers which we get and uh, maybe quickly next time we will show you some systems and they are not very important. And uh, we will show you that once the process is now ready, we can start actually the first process incorporation of Impurity. Maybe I will show you DI plant or something for a few minutes and then start. See you then.